This is quite literally a book review, three years in the making. Hey everyone, welcome back to Andrew's Wizard of the Reads, and as always guys, I am Andrew, and today guys, like I said, we have got a book review for you, and if you saw the thumbnail, you know it's for Sufficiently Advanced Magic by Andrew Rowe, but before we get into that, please like this video and subscribe to the channel as it does help the channel grow, and you can check the description box down below for links to all of my social media, including information about my Patreon if you want to help support what I do here every little bit helps grow and support the channel and is always greatly appreciated but never mandatory and that said guys let's jump on in to this book review and this is literally a book that i purchased in 2020 i know because kindle told me so when i was kind of just reading the blurb uh basically this got submitted by one of my patrons spyro and he was like hey you know i've been doing a lot of recommendations why don't you try this one out and i was like you know what i got you uh, and this was kind of a batch of recommendations that he gave me and initially, like, I had tried reading this in 2020 when I first purchased it. I never got past the first chapter. I don't know why, but what I think happened is I wasn't quite yet a fan of lit RPG or progression fantasy, and that is what this is. And after saying that, if you're still here, great. Happy to have you. Um, you should totally check this one out if you haven't already watched Daniel Green's review of it. Now, that said, that's kind of how this book came on my radar, was through Daniel Green's review. And now that I've got a lot more progression fantasy underneath my belt, um, I can kind of want to talk about this. Because I can safely say, if you liked M.L. Spencer's Dragon Mage, you're probably going to like this book. Because it's kind of the progression version of that. And this is going to be a kind of a little just all over the place because it's very difficult to talk about. So I'm probably going to have to break it out into categories. Let's talk about the main character first. Uh, and that's Corin Cadence of House Cadence. And essentially he is a nobleman who, uh, or uh, he comes from a noble family. I don't want to say nobleman because he's basically in high school. Uh, but he is a noble whose brother went and took an exam in the tower that grants basically people their magical abilities in the form of attunements that kind of show up on their body in sigils, uh, and then they can do various things with it. But basically, five years ago, his, bro his older brother went and took this test and then vanished. Now, it is possible for people to pass away in this test, but Corn doesn't think that's what's happened to his brother. And so when it finally, when he finally comes of age, he goes to take the test with the intent to find his brother. And, you know, there's a whole lot of history going on with Corin. Corin, uh, he is on the spectrum. He is asexual. This book does have LGBTQ um, representation within it. Uh, but it is done very naturally and very gracefully, and it feels like it is a part of the world. It is not a big deal. It is nothing to be commented on, uh, which I really, really loved. Corrin's kind of got problems with, uh, he's got social anxiety, and he's got problems with so social interaction. He hyperfixates, and he doesn't like being touched. So that's what kind of leads me to believe that Corrin is on the spectrum, because I kind of jive with some of those things myself being on the spectrum, which is why I love uh, spectrum representation or autistic representation if, if you want to go as far as that. But that's kind of who Corin is. Now, the world is a lot harder to describe and it's going to kind of feel a little bit more jumbled. But essentially, when we start out is there is a tower. There are six of these towers across multiple nations. These nations are insular. They have shields over them, like to the point where they don't even... Corn's never experienced like actual rain because they've got the shield protecting them from warfare from like neighboring nations. And each spire has like aspects or these kind of demigods who then report to a higher goddess. And they all kind of do different things. But basically the tower serves as a way to gain power. There are tower climbers. And, uh, I believe that's where the series name comes from. I think it's Arcane Ascension. But... Uh, essentially, what you do is you kind of take this test, which Corrin does at the beginning of the book, and you walk in, and you can, the, the tower basically is a set of traps and kind of puzzle rooms uh, with varying degrees of difficulty and deadliness, like there's mirror traps, there's logical puzzles, uh, all sorts of stuff which we get to explore throughout the uh, story. And basically, as you go through the tower... Uh, you've got to pass this test and then get your attunement. And so as that continues and he keeps moving through the rooms, he finally gets to the end of this test and then basically has to go to magical school. And the way that his country, his specific country works, 
is if you get an attunement, you then get sent to this magic school where you then go, and if you don't fail out, you can get um, you can graduate and become a climber, which he then wants to do because if he doesn't become a climber, he has to go into military service and he wants to become a climber in order to search for his brother. And then we've got a larger cast here. Um, we've got Sarah, we've got Patrick, we've got Jin, and we've got Karis. And uh, it's very interesting because there's a leveling system here. It goes all the way from Quartz to Emerald with possible Sapphire. So I'm assuming over the course of the series, that Corrin is going to be progressing through these various levels. Um, right now, his main goal is to reach the next level that he needs, which is Carnelian, which I'm not entirely sure what Carnelian means, but it's still very fascinating. Now, one of the things that is cool about Corrin is Corrin uh, doesn't care. Like, Corrin is very single-minded and focused. He wants to study. He, he wants to find his brother. That is his main goal. And so occasionally he makes a lot of social blunders when he's kind of focusing on what's important to him and solving a mystery that happened during his exam. And this can lead to some funny situations. This leads to funny exams. Uh, there is a heavy focus on learning magic here and how to use his particular attunement that he gets after his test. And the problem with that is, is Corrin's noble house or noble family is warrior class. And he doesn't get a noble attunement. He does not get a combat-focused attunement. And so he has to use his attunement in order to make himself more of a martial person. And I really like that. Uh, overall, this has a lot of... I'm not going to say it's full-on found family. But there is close friend groups here. There is Corrin learning kind of how to... Um, interact in social settings and reconnect with his friends because in his past after you know his family broke apart because his mother uh, took her retainers and left after the disappearance of his brother and this led to his father pulling him out of school for three years so he's been disconnected from his friends from three years and then has to try and reform those old bonds and he makes a lot of stumbles doing it and it's a lot of fun so this was really a great, great read and a lot of fun to get into. Now, overall, let's talk about the categories that I like to kind of break down. And in terms of inventiveness, I thought this was really inventive, but you have to like, like you have to like magic schools and you have to like the intricacies of a hard magic system because there's a lot of rules here. There's a lot of do's, a lot of don'ts. And it, it's a, for me, it was a lot of fun to get into. Then in terms of fun, there's a lot of snark between Corrin and Sarah and Jin and Patrick and then, you know, Corrin interacting with his professors. So I found that a lot of fun. There's a lot of witticism. Um, yeah, I think that's the word I'm looking for. A lot of witticisms and a lot of witty dialogue within within this story. So I, I'm going to give that a 5 out of 5. Pacing, I'm going to give it a 3 out of 5. Because in the fast parts, it's fast. But in the slow parts, it is glacial. Um, and that can, I, I can see that being a problem for some readers. In terms of characterization, I'm going to give this a 4 out of 5. And the reason I'm going to do that is because Corrin at times, it took me a lot longer to figure out that Corrin was on the spectrum than I think it should have. It, it was slowly revealed that he had these kind of idiosyncrasies. And it's kind of like, oh, that that's what's going on. So then I was able to like identify with what was going on with Corrin. And I didn't snap with that immediately. But once I did snap with it, it was fantastic. Another thing is because there's a lot of witty dialogue, a lot of the characters have a sameness to them. There are some, like Jin and Patrick are very different. But everybody else is very witty and very snappy uh, with Corrin. And that was kind of... That was kind of interesting. I'm going to go ahead and do world building here. I think there's a lot of world building to explore here, especially because we've got nations at war. We've got towers. We've got interhouse politics. We've got, you know, foreign mysteries. We've got all sorts of stuff going on. That is a delight to explore. Next up, I want to talk about prose. And the prose flows very well. It's very digestible, very easy to read. I actually really enjoyed the prose. So on a scale of too simple to 100% purple, 
I'm going to give it a kind of like a 2.5 to 3 out of 5 just for being so easy to read, which is a good thing. So if I have to give this a score out of 10, I'm going to give it an 8.5 out of 10 because I really, really enjoyed this and I think it's definitely worth reading. I'm really glad I came back and I did this one. That's all I've really got for you today, guys. I really hope you pick this one up because it is well worth the time, even despite how long it is. It is around a seven to 800 page book. So I'm sorry, but uh, that's, that is what it is. I do like me some beefy books. But guys, that's all I really got for you. So let me know if you've already read this one or if you intend to pick it up. So till next time, peace out, stay magical, bye. And as always, I wanna give a huge thank you to my patrons. I could not do this without you. Thank <laughs> you.